Hello everyone, I am Florent Cabric, postdoctoral researcher in the Avis Group at INRIA Paris-Saclay, and I'm here to talk about how gender is represented in visualizations. And I want to start with a simple question. If you were in a position to visualize data about gender, how would you visually distinguish the genders? Would you prefer to use colors or iconic shapes or just shapes? or a combination of colors and abstract shapes. But after you have selected the appropriate visual variables, what words or symbol would you prefer to use to distinguish between genders? In this paper, we looked at gender representation published by practitioners and researchers over the past 11 years and analyzed how they both visually represented and described gender in their visualizations. Why is it important to study visual gender representation? Gender is a common dimension in datasets, and designers visualizing data about people need to ask themselves the same question I asked you at the beginning of the video. As many in the visualization community have discussed, visualizations are not neutral, they are political, and they also can be harmful. This work aims to provide an overview of current practices to help designers visualize gender data, as well as generate discussion and further research on how to represent gender. Our contribution with this work is threefold. First, we provide a set of scientific figures representing human gender data. Second, we analyze scientific and public-facing visualization in terms of their use of visual variables and their use of language. And finally, we provide a set of considerations for representing gender in data visualizations. To do this, we first collected figures representing gender from different communities and types of practitioners. Our dataset includes the two major conferences in HCI and visualization, the CHI and the VIS conferences, three journals specialized in gender studies from biology, politics, and psychology, and finally, two public collections, Information is Beautiful Awards and the Tableau Public Collection. In total, we collected over 50,000 data visualization, and after filtering, 2,122 images were selected and then coded. Six people coded the images, two undergraduate students and four authors of this paper. Each image from the 2,122 was coded by two coders, and if the coders disagreed, a third coder was involved. To help coders and, coll uh, and collect data, we developed an online tool that you can see in the video now. In short, in this tool, coders selected whether or not a visual variable is used to distinguish gender in the visualization except for color and shapes, which require a detailed selection, as you can see in the video now. Of the 2,122 visualizations, 904 visualizations were relevant, and due to some refinement, we used only 673 visualizations for the analysis. But before we begin to present our results, I would like to add a brief note. In the following, we will discuss gender by comparing only women and men. Unfortunately, of all the visualizations collected, only 17 out of the 904 uh, represented non-conforming genders, which makes the comparison with binary gender impossible. Nevertheless, details about each non-conforming gender representation are present in the paper. For example, the visualization on the left represents male, females, and non-binary gender using three colors, the green, the orange, and a gray. The visualization on the right represents typical biological females and males, described as 46XXF or 46XYM in red and blue color, and three categories of intersex people in brown, purple, and dark blue colors. We analyzed the more than 600 images coded for both visual elements and text. The results of the scientific and public-facing visualizations are quite similar in terms of both visual variables and language use. For the sake of conciseness, we present only the results from scientific visualizations. When we look at how scientists represent gender, our analysis shows that scientists tend to use only one visual channel to distinguish gender. By far, color is the preferred visual channel, followed closely by position. By analyzing the colors, we can see the difference in the representation of gender. In the achromatic visualization, which means that both women and men are represented by grayscale, white is used more often to represent women, 
and black and gray are used more often to represent men. In addition, when women were rendered in gray, men were rarely rendered in white. Indeed, scientists prefer another shade of gray or of the black color. This finding emphasizes that women seem to be represented with lighter colors than men. In terms of chromatic colors, blue is highly represented among men and red among women. In particular, when women were represented by red, men were represented almost exclusively by blue or marginally by green. If we exclude blue and red from the analysis, women's chromatic spectrum is almost evenly distributed when we compare it to the men's one. In the scientist visualizations, the words used to describe gender can be found in two different places, in the caption to describe the visualization and embedded in the chart to name a category on an axis. In this case, we coded the words female and male for the captions and the words men and women for the text embedded in the chart. In the captions, female and male are the most common words used to name binary genders. Interestingly, the word gender is associated more with female and male words than with women and man words. The word sex is also associated more with female and male words than with women and men words, but the difference here is more pronounced. This finding highlights the intertwining of the different words and their meanings, regardless of whether the visualization shows gender or sex data. Precisely, for text embedded in charts, the language most often used is pairs or triplets of words. The researchers prefer to use the female-male pair rather than the woman-man pair. A detailed analysis by research area or time period is provided in the paper. After presenting some results, what do we recommend in terms of gender visualization? We found few visualizations representing gender non-conforming data. Assuming that the data underlying the visualization we analyzed is a representative sample of the population, it is likely that some gender non-conforming individuals have been hidden by the binary data collection. When possible, adopting inclusive tools, such as the forms provided by Sherman et al. in their paper, allows for better representation of all people, both binary and non-binary. A novel tool by Bechal et al. allows participants to define the different dimension of their gender identity by placing one or more dots on the circular chart. According to our review, red and blue are scientists' favorite color when it comes to representing gender data especially when it comes to women and men. This finding provides a new evidence that gender color stereotypes exist, even in data visualization. Assuming that researchers do not want to perpetuate stereotypes, what are the benefits of visualizing women in red and men in blue? Does it allow for better identification of data and categories compared to this alternative design? Is it worthwhile to use stereotypical colors? And how does continued use of these colors cause harm? Many of the visualizations we analyze from all fields tend to prefer the words female and male to describe the binary genders. The use of specific words is still a lively debate in some research communities and practices are evolving. As an international community, it can be difficult to keep up with English gender inclusive language. Some tools, such as the gender red person or the gender unicorn, can help you use more inclusive language and stay up to date. We found very few visualizations in our dataset that included non-conforming genders. Now, assuming we did our own study, we followed the best practices and collected such non-conforming gender data. How should we represent it? It is likely that the sample size of the gender non-conforming people will be much smaller than that of women and men. However, designing data visualizations that do not dwarf or hypervisibilize gender non-conforming people is challenging. One strategy might be to extend previous research on different scales or focus plus context, such as the cutout charts. For example, in this visualization inspired by Statistics Canada, non-binary and transgender people are both first associated with cisgender in the same charts, but also magnified in another chart. Her work is a part of an ongoing discussion about the ethics and inclusiveness of research practices. We hope that our work will stimulate discussion and further research on how best to represent gender. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, come to my talk at VIS 2023 or contact me by email.